The topic for this quarter's documentary was chosen thanks to the participation of 481 users in the poll back in January. If you wish to participate in the poll for next quarter's documentary be sure to stick around until the end of the video. Now, onto our scheduled program. The Plants vs Zombies franchise is home to millions of fans across all of its games, from its 2009 debut as a tower defense game to having a collectible mobile card game in 2016. It's no secret that the franchise has come leaps and bounds since its inception nearly 13 years ago. However, in 2013, at the E3 conference, the world would be shown a revolutionary step in the franchise's history with the announcement of Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare. A completely different twist on the franchise, going from a 2D tower defense to a third person shooter, complete with 8 different classes, 60 different variants, and overall, a remarkable and distinctive experience for the community. The game would set the boundaries for its sequels as well as for what potential genres is the franchise could take. Garden Warfare without question took a direction that albeit was unexpected was praised by the community for years to come. However, for how much the game delivered at the time, a lot of secrets lay dormant in its files. Secrets that never saw the light of day and managed to get in view of the public eye. From potentially unused classes, to boss fights, to even potential game modes. Such content that could have been in the life service game. Now no more. Tonight, we shall take a deep dive and dig through the files in search of the unused content in Garden Warfare 1. Now, before we begin our long and prologue journey into the game files, let us first take a look at the game's reveal back on the 11th of June 2013 at the E3 conference that year. Back then, the reveal served as a way to show off the game's third person nature as well as brief demonstrations of the four plant classes in the Garden Ops game mode. Pea Shooter, Sunflower, Chomper, and Cactus. From the gameplay shown, we can clearly see that apart from a few graphical differences and mildly different statistics on each of the classes, the game functioned almost identical to the ops that we have today, aside from it being altered to have a disco zombie and a gargantua show up after wave 1, presumably for demonstration purposes. However, even from this reveal trailer alone, we can spot two noticeable differences that might be more than just for demonstration purposes and could possibly reflect different gameplay mechanics. The first of these being spotted earlier in the trailer is that each player seems to have a life counter underneath their character icon. This is not present in the live version of Ops we have today, so this could mean either one of two things. It could possibly be that each player only had 5 lives and that self revives weren't a thing, or that it was a public self revive counter, showing how many self revives each character had left. However, the second more notable difference is that of an appearance by what looks to be the Zombot from PvZ1, making its grand appearance by falling from the sky, instantly killing the Chomper, laughing, and then stepping on the cactus, bringing the presentation to a close. Obviously, this Zombot may have been just a part of the presentation, especially given its dramatic but brief appearance having only a total of 4 seconds of screen time before the presentation is over. There is however, a key sequence missing here with the Zombot. If we take a look back at the previous bosses, we can see they have an introduction animation as well as a title card that displays their name before they begin fighting. What we can also see is that the introduction animation also seems to take place within the actual map itself rather than each introduction animation having a completely different environment. But here, we see no such instance of an introduction animation, no mention of the Zombot's name, and instead, it just falls from the sky without any prior warning, and begins attacking immediately. This could possibly mean that the sequence for the Zombot was either not finished at the time of the presentation, or it was intentionally not given one as to surprise the audience. This kind of decision, whilst confusing to some, does make sense in terms of building hype for the game, though we will come back to the Zombot later. Let us keep on track and move on to the game's release and explore the files.
Moving on to the game's full release, we have a lot of unused graphics within the files, as well as a handful of abilities for us to go through. The first of these two abilities is what looks to be a Zombot turret ability. This ability used to originally belong to the Engineer class, and presumably allowed him to place down turrets like the ones in gardens and graveyards except he had full control of where to place them. This is only a rough educated guess however, with the only source being from the zombie class reveal trailer, where we see the engineer use a jackhammer to charge into battle before placing a turret by his side. Considering the fact that it has an ability icon, tells us that it was late into the game's development before the ability was scrapped and promptly swapped with the Zombot drone. Another ability that looked to be scrapped is what has been dubbed as the hand grenade. This ability seemed to briefly be originally meant for the scientist to have in place of the sticky bomb before being scrapped. This ability was also associated with the scrapped gravedigger class prior to the scientist's creation, which we will get into at a later time. Whilst it does have an ability icon from a documented test by Gabriel, upon using the ability, the scientist can be briefly heard giggling before the game comes to a screeching halt and out right crashes. From various assumptions, it seems like it would have crawled around towards the nearest enemy before exploding. Though due to a lack of development on the ability, we cannot say for certain. There is also some data left for a healing gravestone ability that used to belong to the gravedigger. It is assumed to be the predecessor to the zombie heal station, though there is unfortunately no official video documentation on this ability, so this is only an assumption. Moving on to unused graphics, we have quite a lot to unpack here, so we're going to be here for quite a while. Our first set of unused graphics revolve around sticker packs based on abilities. For those of you who've played before, whenever you unlock a new ability from a sticker pack, it'll show an image of the ability in action. Well, these kinds of images were also found for most of the original abilities in the game, with a handful of them missing. It is speculated that the starting abilities would have originally been unlocked through opening packs, much like the alternate abilities, though this was probably changed somewhere down the line leaving these card graphics unused. On the topic of sticker packs, several graphics for unused sticker packs were also found, with one of them having two brown coats on the cover, one having a heel flower, and one of them having a gargantua with some odd looking lighting to it. Because of the simple looking nature of these packs, it is presumed that they were meant to be placeholders until the packs had their designs refined. This is supported further since this graphic is also found with them, in which it is a simplistic texture featuring a crying yeti, along with some text saying saying that the card does not exist, though this might be for the individual packs inside, rather than for an actual sticker pack. There are also some cards, hinting that at some point in the development the player would have been able to use cosmetics from other variants in the same class and have them applied to each other as shown here are several cards having the default pea shooter be equipped with various organics and cosmetics normally equipped by other classes, though on the last two cards there seems to be some sort of placeholder texture and object applied to him, which can be seen on quite a few scrapped cosmetics, especially for the soldier, which is most of them sized to an extreme scale, with one of them obstructing his head from view. These were probably scrapped early in development as they have a completely different design to the cards that we see today. We also have what looks to be an early version of the end screen from Garden Ops which makes it look like some sort of book with slots dedicated to both normal waves as well as the boss wave and the escape sequence. Up next are some spotting icons, with two of them being part of the Chomper virus unused game mode that we will cover further down the line. These two include an antidote and what looks to be a radio part. The Gravedigger also has a spotting icon, though this is more reminiscent of a boss spotting icon rather than the ones used by the current playable zombie classes, as those do not have a white outline around them, whilst the Gravedigger's icon does, which lines up with the other boss icons having a similar white outline around their spotting icon. This would suggest that at one point, the Gravedigger went from being a class to a potential boss before ultimately being scrapped. This graphic was also found that belonged to him, which is supposedly its icon when shown in the Zomboss slots, though due to the graphic having a harsh contrast in comparison to the others, it's either a placeholder or a hint as to how the boss icons were originally displayed before being redesigned entirely. 
Lastly, we have some UV map textures for various models, which we have access to three of them. One of them is for Bungie Zombie from the original PVZ, though it's the next two sheets that are rather interesting. One of them is for the future imp, which surprisingly was supposed to make an appearance in Garden Warfare 1, as well as that one for the mech Gigantia as well. These two texture sheets are quite intriguing, as it provides substantial evidence that these two enemies have been around long before the release of the game's sequel, and we are meant to have an appearance in this game before being scrapped. We will take a look at the models with the textures fully applied in the next section. Our next part of our expedition shall explore the models with the previously assigned textures as well as listen to some sound files that may be of interest. Starting with the models, as previously mentioned both the future imp vehicle and mech gargantua had texture sheets within the files. Well, once applied to the models, these are the results that we have. As you can see from looking at the model's general appearance, they would have had a slightly more weather design overall, which is especially apparent on the Mech Gargantua when comparing its model to the Garden Warfare 2 version. The future imp vehicle does not have a model however, so the image shown has the texture sheet applied to the model used in Garden Warfare 2. It's quite fascinating to see that these enemies were meant to appear in the first shooter, though were ultimately pushed to the sequel instead. We also have the model for the Bungie Zombie as well, which thanks to a documentation by Dark Demona, we can see that not only does it have a full rig with animations and attacks, but we can also see what appears to be some sort of rope, presumably wrapped around his waist, coming out of the back of his shirt. This ties in very well with another finding within the files, that being the model for the Zombot found back at the E3 presentation, as well as that, a model for both Dr. Zombus, as well as a van of some sorts. These possibly could have suggested some sort of mode that took heavy influence from the final level in the original PVZ, which has Dr. Zomba's preform attacks both involving a van as well as bungee zombies. These three models will make another appearance later down the line. There also exists a model of what looks to be some sort of small teleport device, presumably an early version of the teleporter we see today. The model consists of a small podium with a control panel that has a few levers, buttons, and a monitor featuring Dr. Zombus from the first PVZ game. What it would have done is unknown, since there does not seem to be any form of functionality left for it, though as previously stated, it is speculated to be an early version of the teleporter we have today. Lastly, we have a model of a fairly simplistic question mark, which actually was meant to be used in the scrapped Super Team Vanquish game mode as to represent the power-ups, though due to the game mode being scrapped, this was unfortunately scrapped as well. Next, we have multiple audio files to examine, both in terms of sound effects as well as some unused music files. We first have three audio files dedicated to the previously mentioned hand grenade ability, one consisting of a fuse and the other two consisting of the explosion based on the player's proximity to the explosion. There is also a sound effect for the mech gargantua which would play when he would have been selected from the zomboss slots. <coughs> Lastly are some unused music files which compose of two supposedly used for loading screens, an unused variation of loon skirmish, an instrumental of one of the zombie objective capture themes and an unused version of the march theme in garden ops. The loading sequences will be played in full whilst the rest will have a section of them played.
Access to all of these audio files will be via the link to the Garden Warfare Cutting Room Floor page which will be linked in the description. This next section will be dedicated to the various hints of scrapped variants or classes within the code. Starting off however, we will first take a look at data regarding the SWAT zombie. The SWAT zombie is one of the two unused classes that is referenced within the game files as well as in some concept art for when the game was in early development. From what we can assume, the SWAT zombie was potentially the early revision of the foot soldier class before the design was changed. All that's left of the SWAT zombie is some leftover code and some skeleton information. However, the SWAT zombie makes another unused appearance in the files for Garden Warfare 2. Specifically in the texture sheet for Gravedigger's cameo appearance, we can see texture work for a SWAT uniform in the bottom corner. Whether this means he was considered is unknown, though it is quite interesting to find his textures alongside the Gravedigger's. Though speaking of the Gravedigger, let us now move our attention towards him, for Gravedigger is easily the most well-known unused class within the game. With him originally filling the role of the healer class, the Gravedigger would have been quite the interesting class, having a hand grenade that can move and a gravestone that could not only heal allies, but also summon AI zombies also granted him both healing and utility to the team. His primary was also described to be like a shotgun weapon, which is similar to what the scientist currently has now. Ultimately, the reason the Gravedigger ended up not becoming a class was due to the design team having difficulty in coming up with variants for the class, leaving both the class and his kit ultimately scrapped and recycled for the scientist class. The Gravedigger's tale does not end here however, as shown earlier in the documentation, an unused boss spotting icon and boss slot graphic were found based on the Gravedigger, hinting that the developers had planned to remake him into a boss, though once again, for unknown reasons, the boss Gravedigger was scrapped, leaving very few remnants of his existence in the files. Such an interesting concept on paper that unfortunately never managed to see the light of day and ultimately ended up being replaced. This last character that I wish to cover is entirely based of speculation from myself as the only source of its potential existence is a single PNG image. Earlier, it was mentioned that at one point in time, the developers had intended to allow players to equip cosmetics normally on specific variants across the entire class. Well, the engineer class also had this effect, with 5 images to support this feature. You've probably noticed that the fifth image is not present with the rest and there is a specific reason as to why, which I will share right now. Looking at the fifth image in question, it looks like nothing special, being just an untextured engineer hat with various accessories and nails placed on top of it. That is until we examine the file name of the image, which is labeled as carpenter.png. Now, this could just be an unused cosmetic or a placeholder for something else, but the fact that it was not only found with the other four images, each having cosmetics from other engineer variants, leads me to believe that this supposed fifth image is of a carpenter engineer variant that never made it into the base game. A variant lost to time whose existence was only preserved by a singular PNG image. What this variant could have done is unknown and is completely up to anyone's guess since apart from the singular image, no other data has been documented about it. Next we shall take a look at the three unused game modes found within the files though due to a lack of proper code only two of them can be properly documented and observed. Initially video documentation was done by Nataliris though due to their channel recently being closed the video documentation will instead be provided by Phantomus. Firstly we shall take a look at the Super Team Vanquish game mode. The Super Team Vanquish mode functioned identical to normal Team Vanquish but with two key differences. The first First being that instead of playing until 50 points, it was now until 100 points, though no graphic exists for it so it uses the same one that is present in normal Team Vanquish. The other, more notable difference is that random power-ups would fall out of the sky and grant various effects depending on which one you picked up. The number of effects you can obtain can range from moving faster to summoning AI to heal aura or in rare cases even becoming almost invincible. From the gameplay shown, we can 
can see that the question mark is used to represent the power-ups spawning in. Interestingly, this game mode also has some scrapped power-ups which included instant heals and near instant ability refreshes. Why this game mode ended up being scrapped is unknown as it seemed to be near completion and in a mostly functioning state. Though for long time players this game mode's concept may sound familiar to you and there is a specific reason for that as this game mode did actually at one point in time make it to the public eye in the tale of the taco event specifically the very first game mode we got is an almost exact replica of super team vanquish except with ice creams and a smaller range of effects as well as the game mode being suburbanation instead of team vanquish a shame that such an interesting concept made it into the game sequel only to be publicly available for all of a single week before being unused once again our next game mode of interest will be the chomper virus game mode with the video documentation being done by dart demona this game mode revolves around a concept reminiscent of infected where one team has to avoid being killed by the other team whilst the other team has to kill them in order to turn them into one of their own Every so often, antidotes will spawn around the map and the zombie team has to pick them up within a set time limit or else they will end up becoming a chomper. There was a variation of this where the zombies could collect parts of a radio where they could summon a rescue and win if any of them managed to survive. It is interesting to note that the antidotes themselves are a reused asset, suggesting that the asset that was meant to take their place had not been made prior to it being scrapped entirely. Another thing to note is that all players take double damage from all sources and on top of that the chomper team has access to a power up which grants health regeneration four times more jump height and a 50 percent speed increase this game mode whilst certainly an interesting concept was unfortunately scrapped for unknown reasons Lastly, there is some code that mentions an arena game mode, though due to the lack of functionality for it, it is not able to be observed, so we can only speculate at what its existence would have brought to the table. This last section will be dedicated to the unused maps that were found within the files, though one of them can technically be observed within the live service game through the means of a glitch. Before we get into that however, let us first take a look at an unused arena that was actually meant for the unused Zombot featured earlier. This arena can be found within the Zomboss estate map, which is coincidentally the same map the Zombot made its grand appearance in. Normally, this arena is never loaded and thus cannot be seen in normal gameplay, though by forcing the subworld data to be loaded, you can get the arena to appear in game, allowing us to properly observe it. As you can see, the arena contains rather basic geometry and is missing a lot of textures, though the main attraction would be the T-posing Zombot in the center, who actually has several programmed attacks, though they are clearly unfinished due to two of them not dealing damage and most of them spawning in an additional limb that preforms the attack, whilst the model itself remains in place. There is also a yellow colored cylinder placed in one of the Zombot size, which may have been a temporary weak spot that you had to shoot at, though we cannot say for certain, the area behind the model uses assets from Driftwood Shores, either as a placeholder or possibly as the actual theme of the arena itself. Because of the nature of this arena, this could possibly suggest that at one point in time, this may have been a part of a game mode that never got past the concept stages and was thus left here, scrapped for the rest of time. Now, onto the other unused map, which can be observed within the live service game. This was actually brought to my attention by a user on Discord under the name of Lava Lord CP, who will be credited for telling us this rather intriguing information. According to them, a hidden bunker exists outside of the boundaries of suburban flats and by using an exploit to escape the map's intended boundaries on Gnome Bottom, we can find it in the middle of some strange terrain. Naturally, since it was stated that it could be viewed within the base game, I wanted to see it for myself, so after having a discussion on Discord, a lobby was established, and when the map was rotated to the one in question, the glitch was preformed, and through following the provided instructions, after ascending the massive hill, there was a bunker, in all of its glory, stranded in the middle of this strangely shaped land. What this bunker would have been used for, or why it was even left in a place that can never be seen, is entirely up to debate, as even myself and Lava Lord have not a clue as to what it could have been. 
Though whilst the bunker was of initial interest in this investigation, the arbitrarily shaped terrain began to look strangely familiar. Exploring the area, we can see this shaped terrain is actually Zomboss estate but without any of its assets loaded in. This can be proven to confirmation. As recently, a tweet was uncovered by Jeff Shaw, one of the game's developers, who stated that they were connected originally as part of a prototype that unfortunately ended up not making the cut though the remnants of it were left behind. It would have been a very interesting concept having these two original maps be merged into one singular large map. Why it was scrapped is unknown, though it could have possibly been due to technical limitations, balancing, or maybe even the sheer size of the two maps combined could have been two big four game modes like Team Vanquish. However, as since the game at this point is more than 8 years old, all we can really do now is speculate and make educated guesses. As to why the bunker is there is a complete mystery that may never ever be brought to a conclusion. We've had quite the long journey tonight and have uncovered many of the game's hidden aspects that never made it to the public eye. From its unused graphics to models to bosses and sound effects to even a look at what could have been two maps merged into one. We can only imagine how much more the game would have had to offer if all of this content was available right from the start. If you wish to participate in the poll for next quarter's documentary then be sure to head over to the community tab for a new poll has been started. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this in the future. And good night.